Hello everyone, Chris here, and welcome to another episode of Edit Room. Today we're going to be discussing the new and updated masking panel in Lightroom. These new features include some very useful tools to help streamline your workflow. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to want to set my white balance and exposure and actually go ahead and straighten out this image. So first off, let's start with a white balance. It's a little bit on the magenta side. Uh, it looks pretty good to me. I, I'll add a little bit of warmth. And then I'll bring up the exposure. Let's say right about there is looking pretty good. And then let me go ahead and straighten this out real quick. First, I'm going to apply some lens correction so we can get rid of those curved lines. And then straighten it out to match up with our horizontal lines. That looks perfect. Now, normally I'd be looking to bring up the exposure to match my subject's skin tones and not really worry too much about the surrounding imagery. Kind of like this. But let's say I wanted to go for a more balanced look and bring the surrounding imagery closer in exposure. You could try to achieve this by bringing down highlights or lifting shadows, but this would fundamentally alter the preset you're using and that's no good. Now, I'd really prefer if my background was around, let's say here, right about there, regarding exposure. But as you can see, our subject is very underexposed. So let's go ahead and jump into the masking panel here and see what can be done. Give it a click. Now, as you can see, we have a few options, but we're going to be focusing on, on select subject for now. Let's go ahead and give it a click. So as you can see, this auto function has masked my subject nearly perfectly, which honestly probably would have taken me 10 minutes to do myself. From here, it's a matter of bringing up the exposure. Say right about there to keep it looking natural and then applying a preset. Voila. So the only other thing I want to do just real quick here is bring up my overall exposure just a tad. Yeah, loving it. Perfect. Let's go ahead and jump back into the masking panel and discuss all the other features. Now, one quick thing to note with any mask you may apply is that there are different overlay modes in the bottom left hand corner of your editing window. First, select the mask you'd like to affect. Then head down here. And you can preview each one by hovering over the anchor here. Let's take a look at all the different ones. Now I personally just like color overlay, but feel free to play around and find which works best for you. Let's apply another mask and take a look at the other options. Now you'll notice the other options have disappeared from where they were previously, but all you need to do is head up to this plus icon, give it a click, and there they are. So first off, the select sky function, as it's described, will mask the sky in your image. Let's give it a click. It's actually very good at not selecting near field objects, which is really nice. This particular image doesn't really have much information in the sky, but can be utilized just the same as we use select subject, allowing you to make that localized adjustment affecting color, exposure, whatever you'd like. The next three masks you're most likely familiar with, but they're all now consolidated in the masking panel. First off, the brush mask, allowing you to freely paint anywhere in your image. This is great for helping pop specific details and overall giving you complete control of your masking. The linear gradient mask is one of my favorites. It allows you to softly transition whatever effect you apply from one point in the frame to another. I personally love using it to darken the lower part of the frame to bring more attention to my subject. The radial gradient mask is also a favorite. I love using this as a way to quickly highlight my subject and help it pop from the rest of the frame. Kind of like a customizable vignette, if you will. Next up is the color range mask. This allows you to select a specific range of hues and edit them independently. Just use the eyedropper to select whichever color and frame you want. From there, you can refine the range with this slider and then make your desired adjustments. Lastly is the luminance range mask. As described, this will select a specific range of luminance, whether shadows, mid-tones, or highlights. From there, you can adjust the range of tones affected with this very nifty tool. This can be great for adding dynamic contrast, bringing out detail in shadows, or diffusing highlights to give your image a soft and beautiful appearance. You'll also notice this depth range mask, which is grayed out. This can only be applied when editing images containing a depth map. 
Specific cameras, including some of the latest iPhones, contain depth of field information, which would then theoretically allow you to select the out of focus portion of your image and make any necessary adjustments you'd like. Now that we've gone through all the masking panel features, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the before and after.